G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to another Backyard Farm aquaponic clip. This time around though, we're not looking at our aquaponics here, we're going to hop in the car and visit mum and dad's place where we made a bit of a move on their system yesterday. And just to bring you up to speed, mum and dad have a basic chop, or chop and flip system where you chop the top off an IBC and flip it over. You can check out that little clip up there if you're not familiar with that little DIY jobby. So what we're doing with theirs is adding a few more beds, a standalone fish tank and working out some sort of solids filtration in between. Uh, before we pop on over there though, I just wanted to um, let you folks know that we actually have an online store of sorts. Um, on, in that store I sell Unisils, Venturis and also root pouches to Aussies here and folks in Southeast Asia. So check it out, there'll be a bit of a link up there. We are also affiliates for a couple of different places. Uh, Veggie Pod Australia, we actually offer a 10% discount if you um, buy the pods uh, using our little discount code. And also uh, Aqua Gardening here in Australia, who are one of the um, premier aquaponics, hydroponics and pond supply stores here in Brisbane, Australia. And lastly, we also have an Amazon influencer page. So if you folks over in the States, you can buy through there and we get a few pennies from everything that you buy as well. So I just thought I'd um, spruik that. Uh, every little cent helps, especially at the moment, uh, seeing as we're leading up to renovating the house. I will stop beer bashing you about the store now and we'll uh, hop in the car and go visit mum and dad's place. Hey folks, just round to mum and dad's with a trailer full of clay over there and we're just going to start cutting up these IBCs where all we're doing today is pretty much all just cutting up the um, the two grow beds so we can wash some clay out in them and we're going to set one up over here on the stand we're only going to set up one bed to begin with just here and um, once more fish are added to the system and there's more nutrient cycling through we'll add up the, we'll um, add the second bed here uh, Dad's just pumping out uh, the fish tank. He's been storing water in here, so and leaves too, by the looks of it. So <laughs> um, he's just watering the front lawn with that, and then we're going to rack that up on some bricks. And then what we're going to do is, well, the idea is we're going to um, flood this bed here. I'm going to wash all the clay because there's a load of solids that have been collected coming straight through from down underneath. Um, wash all the clay in here and dump it into the new bed. Uh, and um, yeah, then add new clay into here. That won't be happening today though because um, someone may have flogged the bell siphon he made for his mother to make up a barrel system. But anyway, we won't worry about that. So that'll happen uh, during the week after Kira settled into school. She can come over here and do school for mum and dad's Wi-Fi so, or internet. So anyway, that's, that's what we're up to at the moment. So someone's doing my job. It's my job. Stop that. I'll leave it there, we'll pick it up later folks. So I'm just chopping up the um, the IBC here and as you can see I've just got some lines down the side of the frame here just with the, um, the felt marker just down there. Now the problem is with these guys that part of the cage there doesn't meet up down the bottom here so normally what you what what you'd end up doing is trying to measure from the corner to get it to fit. An easier way to do that is just to um, take the IBC out flip it over, stick it back in, and then, yeah, just use these guys as another guideline to mark it. And um, just for the top and the bottom, I've just got my little flexible Venetian blind panel there. And I'm just gonna curve that around the corner and um, then get some lines across the top and bottom. So here we go, folks. We've got a couple of beds um, cut and in place. And Dad's just going to level out the bricks through the week. And um, we'll get back into this next weekend. We're getting a couple of treated um, timber uh, slabs or sleepers, sorry, just to lay down there to keep this uh, nice and stable and raise it up uh, probably a besser brick or a cinder brick there in height. Uh, take no notice of this. This is all basically I've brought a whole heap of bits and pieces over here to play Lego today, trying to work out what we're going to do and how we're going to do it and what would be easier for mum and dad to um, use. And what we've pretty much all um, come up with is that bed there and this bed here will be um, media beds. This bed here is going to be a floating raft, thank you David. Um, and we'll, uh, basically there'll be an inlet on one of these edges here and there'll be a drain in one of those sides there back into the sump. Um, filtration wise, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. 
because I was just going to do a budget jobby and as you saw before that pipe just runs straight out um, through that um, elbow out to here to deliver water straight through the grow beds and into the um, into the sump tank uh, but have a radial flow filter in the center there now I decided because we're going to run this one here as a um, floating raft bed and I still have my old um, filter drums because I never throw anything out I thought what I'll do is I'll set up a dual drain system so we have a skimmer coming out the top into a biofilter um, so this is just a little bit of a mock-up um, it's pretty much all going to sit like this the water will come out here and then you know, leave my little fishies into the base of a biofilter and then there's a large exit hole probably a 90 mil that will go straight into the sump tank there out of the side of this bed here probably about um, no higher than two-thirds of the way up we're going to have a, um, a solids lifting outlet just a 25 millimeter one and it's going to come into a small 60 liter ish uh, radial flow filter and then I'll have a, um, a little skimmer on the top of that that will take the water down and into the base of the biofilter and then again it will um, upflow through the media and out into the sump tank now in the base here there will be some air stones I haven't drawn them in there are also going to be an air stone in here uh, no venturi I'm going to have the water coming in from the pump in the sump and try and uh, push it down on a sort of slight downward angle over against that wall there and trying to get everything into the middle um, for the time being I'm just going to use a standard drain fitting down the base there to try and take the solids the amount of water coming out from the base there um, through into the radial flow filter is generally around about five to ten percent from memory of the total um, outflow from the system and that's generally enough to collect the solids and take them out uh, with the majority of the water coming out through the top here so that's the plan um, I did tell mum I've, I've gone a little bit more deluxe than I was planning to mainly because it takes a lot of the, um, the guesswork out if we were running just via gravity through here through a radial flow filter and then out through taps on the beds and for whatever reason something happens um, and they ended up with water backing up it can basically um, end up with problems here overflowing and all, all the rest of it or actually it would overflow out of the radial flow filter if I run it the split flow method um, they're pretty much all guaranteed if they retard the flow into any of these beds or a, a grandkid turns them off too much um, that just means sends all the bulk of the water back through here into the fish tank this 50 mil pipe will be able to handle any flow and then once it gets through into the um, biofilter 90 mil or three and a half or three and a half inch I think or two and a half, yeah three and a half inch or three inch outlet into the sump will be able to take that flow so I'm just trying to build in for any um, hassles uh, yeah we cut the cage up dad's already galled them after we ground them flat uh, did hit this with a um, dad hit that with a bit of a wire brush trying to take the rust off but all this is going to end up being cladded the fish tank will end up being cladded but to begin with it'll just have um, some sarking maybe sarking and just um, shake cloth and the only other thing we really need to do is just get some timbers um, just to go across the end here and we'll definitely need a timber across the middle here but yeah that's that's pretty much all what we're planning on doing and as mum was saying I mean she's she's more than happy with how well this has grown considering they're getting a teaspoon of um, fish food a day so she's pretty chuffed about that so she's really looking forward to getting some fishies in the system and they're going with jade perch too by the way so there you go that's where we got up to today um, I'm sort of glad I brought my bag of bits and pieces even though the the designs changed a fair bit I'm, I'm happier that they'll be able to manage a, a lot easier and that's basically just going to be the drain fitting um, for the the base of the fish tank uh, that's just something else I had in there to explain something to be I'll probably end up using a, an attachment like that to try and jet the water into the fish tank rather than using the Venturi uh, mainly because if they're going to have air in the system the backup air is going to also be connected to the same air line so if power failure does happen um, they'll have air if there's a mechanical failure they'll still have air so I'm pretty happy with that little arrangement um, but if that doesn't make sense it will later on oh, and this is just a little fitting I'll probably use something like this or similar um, well, actually I probably won't because the pellets food feed pellets will fit through there but I'll have to work out something to skim the water from the top with the fish tank and while there are um, small little um, fingerlings in there 
I'll, they'll be within a little nursery basket that I've got inside the fish tank until they're large enough not to get sucked out any solid lifting outlet. So there you go, I hope that all made sense and sorry for the long-winded explanation. It probably will change again somewhere along the line, but I thought I'd just bring you folks along and show you that there has been a, a, a tangible beginnings to mum and dad's upgrade. So I hope you enjoyed that look at the planning process and the um, small start we've made to mum and dad's expansion. If you'd like to be kept up to date with uh, the rest of the build, all you need to do is hit the little subscribe button down there and check the bell icon and you'll be sent an update whenever I upload a clip on that system or our system or something else going on in our little backyard farm. And you can come along and say good day if you feel like it. Before I go, I really do need to thank the marvellous folks over on Patreon who are continuing to support our channel here through their generous little offerings. Uh, in particular, our super contributors, who you can find listed in the description down below. There's um, some retail stores, some Facebook pages looking at aquaponics um, startups and also homesteaders and backyard farmers. So pop on down and check them out. You might find something you're interested in. I do hope you're all well and happy and that your own patches and aquaponic systems are booming and I will catch you next clip. Cheers all and have a top one.